Hey, I hope this finds you doing well. Uh, in this little devotional, I wanted to talk to you about your anointing, the anointing that you have from God as one of his children. Uh, I used to spend a lot of time, you know, asking God to anoint this meeting or to anoint me for this ministry. And then God began to show me that not just me, but each one of his children already have an anointing. So if you want, take your Bibles and open to 1 John chapter number 2, and we'll look at um, verse 18 through 27, which is more verses than we normally would look at in a devotional, but it kind of has some continuity to it. Beginning in verse number uh, 18, he says, Children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that Antichrist is coming, so now many Antichrists have come. Therefore we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that it might become plain that they all are not of us. But you have been anointed by the Holy One, and you all have knowledge. I write to you, not because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and because no lie is of the truth. Who is the liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, he who denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever confesses the Son has the Father also. Let what you heard from the beginning abide in you. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, then you too will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he made to us, eternal life. I write these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you. But the anointing that you receive from him abides in you, and you have no need that anyone should teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about everything and is true and is no lie, just as it has taught you, abide in him. Now, the Apostle John really teaches us what it means to abide. And he was writing to these churches uh, sometime in the late first century and trying to correct the false teaching of Gnosticism. And he wants to warn the church that there's these false teachers out there. And as certainly as they, there were false teachers in the first century, there are certainly in the 21st century. In verse number 18, he says to us that, that we're his children, that we are true believers. And, and he's writing to these true believers who are about to go through a, a very great difficult time of persecution. The church uh, suffered much during this time. Um, there were some that had come into the church, but they had left. Uh, showing that they they were they didn't hadn't been born again that they were not true believers in verse 19 he said they went out from us they were not of us for if they had been of us they would have continued with us but they went out that it might become plain that they are all not of us and John's just trying to show them that that not everyone who comes in is a part of the body of Christ. But look at verse number 20, because he uses it first here and then later again. He says, But you have been anointed by the Holy One, and you ha all have knowledge. So I want you to see that you have an anointing. The moment that you put your faith in Jesus Christ and his finished work, the moment that you are born again, that you are indwelled by the Spirit of God. And that indwelling not only gifts you for ministry, but helps you to know and understand what is truth. He says in verse 21, you know the truth. 
I write to you not because you don't know the truth, but because you know it and because no lie is of the truth. It seems uh, maybe hard to believe, but just in the few decades after Christ had risen from the grave and on the day of Pentecost and the church is empowered and comes to life and begins to spread, already false teachers are there and they're deceiving and they te are telling the people um, lies. He wants us to understand that you know it because you are of the truth. And then in verse 22, he says, who is the liar? But he who denies that Jesus is the Christ. That, that Christ is not Jesus' last name. It, the, to be the Christ means to be the anointed one or the Messiah. And so he tells us this um, in, in verse 22, who is the liar but the one who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. The Antichrist is denying the whole Trinity. Uh, and no one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever confesses the Son has the Father also. So to have one is to have all. When we receive Christ and He comes to live within us through His Spirit... That means we're in a relationship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Antichrist always will, in some way or another, try to take away from the union between the Son and the Father. You can't have one without the other. Then in verse number 24, he says, Let what you heard from the beginning abide in you. And that word abide simply means to live in you. Uh, John chapter 15 calls us to a life of abiding, meaning that we live from Jesus Christ, who is our source. He says, let this abide in you. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, if it lives in you, then you too will abide in the Son and in the Father. And then verse 25, and this is the promise that he made to us eternal life. And remember that eternal life doesn't begin when you die physically and go to heaven Eternal life begins the moment that you believe. You don't have to worry about going to heaven when you die. He tells us that we have the promise of God, eternal life. And he's calling us now simply to live in that life and recognize that he is our source. So let what you heard, let what you've been taught, abide in you let it settle in your heart make it let it be make its home in your heart and then we live from the it, it the, the truth it, because we know that the truth is the key to living from the source which is the sun we don't have to live the christian life for god but we live it from god when we recognize that he is the source of all. Now, there have always been deceivers. But look at verse 27 again, one more time. He says, but the anointing that you receive from him abides in you, and you have no need that anyone should teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about everything and is true and is no lie, just as it has taught you, abide in him. So do you see that you have an anointing? We don't need to ask God to give us an anointing for any ministry, for any living. We need to live from the anointing that we have in him. So friend, you have an anointing. The spirit in you will affirm right teaching. Paul. John isn't saying that we don't need any teachers because he's obviously teaching them. But he's saying you need to trust the Spirit of God in you to affirm the teaching that you're hearing, to know that it is true. So you, friends, learn to listen to his voice. 
and then walk in obedience to what he asks you to do or what he desires to do through you might be a better way to put it. Anyways, take this truth and remember, for whatever you face, whatever's going on in your life, you are anointed by the Spirit of God and live from that anointing. Hey, I love you and I hope you have a great week. God bless.